Hello and welcome back to Valheim everyone, Chiselchip here and in today's video I'm going to be doing something a little bit different than the Valheim survival series. I'm actually here on my cheater world or the world where I use dev commands so that I can fly and do all this cool stuff. Um, but I'm going to be actually testing out a build idea that I've had in me for quite a while in terms of making the most efficient, nicest looking starter house. Um, and yeah, without further ado, let's get to it. So I basically do have the foundation here uh, already kind of mapped out. It's going to have a basement here uh, and then like a winding staircase up here, a little watchtower and a nice house with a wraparound deck. You'll see it when it comes together, but I'll put a screenshot on screen right now of the exact dimensions in meters of each one of these little uh, sides here so you can kind of replicate it. So. What I built first was uh, this little round tower here, and this is just two meter by two meter by two meter by two meter. All these little uh, boards kind of snapped into each other. And then I started digging the basement uh, to kind of be that same width to go out this far. And then I built this top piece and then dug the basement right in the center here to go right out there. And the reason there's a little gap here is because this is going to be the fireplace and we're going to need a little spot for the smoke ventilation. And you'll see here in a second. And then depth wise, it is uh, four meters high from the floor here to the top. So it's a full uh, two meter and a two meter stacked on top of each other. And then for here, obviously there was like one meter. I'm leaving this little uh, kind of rest here because I'm actually going to put some chests up there um in a bit so with that said i'm actually just gonna start working on the rest of the floor here i think i want it i think i want it to be lengthwise uh let's just turn on free build right now so we're just gonna go ahead and snap those guys in and i think i am gonna have it be like centered on right here or actually you know what i'm gonna have it all the way other side that way i don't actually have to uh that way I don't actually have to like do any sort of weird snapping or any of that. So that way that just lines up nicely like that. And again, these are all just snapping into place and it is a bit finicky kind of digging this basement, but it didn't actually take me too long. I've dug a lot of basements before for Valheim. So I'm kind of like used to it uh, from another world that I had a while before. So I am going to go ahead and snap the floor onto here. And for the round floor, I'm just taking it and snapping it onto each one of these round pieces, basically rotating it twice each time. Looks like that's blocked there. There we go. And we'll move over here. Rotate twice. And there it is. Rotate twice. And there it goes. And it looks like we got a little gray door grayling over here that we got to deal with. All right, and then for this last piece right here, I'm going to do the rotate twice, and then I'm just gonna fill the floor in here with two of those single guys. So this will essentially be our basement floor, and again, this is all out of materials that you can do a really, really early game. I'm not really gonna use any stone in this build. I might decorate it with some later game things later on, but the build itself could be really, really easy for you to do. So what I'm actually gonna do now is place a core wood beam right in the center of this hole, or at least as close to center as I can, because I'm doing a spiral staircase here, and this is going to be the support for the spiral staircase. So, cool tip on how to do spiral staircases. You guys are going to learn a lot in this uh, in this episode. You're going to learn how to build round roofs, spiral staircases, all that good stuff. So what I'm actually going to do is, before I start the spiral staircase, I'm going to hop up to the second level, and I'm going to actually begin placing the floor up here, 
because I need to know where the spiral staircase is going to come up to uh, so that I have like an opening at the, at the second level here to be able to actually go down to the spiral staircase. So we're just going to go ahead and put those there for now. I'm not going to entirely finish it, but just kind of as a placeholder to know about where we want the spiral staircase. I'm just going to zoom in here a little bit, but I'm probably going to want it to be probably going to want it to be right here. And you'll see right here what I uh, what I actually like to do for them. So because uh, most what most people do for a spiral staircase is take these beams and kind of free place them and the benefit to that. So let me just show you a little quick example of that. If I took uh, one of these beams and kind of press shift and you can kind of uh, like, you know, snap one there and rotate it once and snap one there, rotate it once, snap one there. So this is kind of an example of a spiral staircase and you can just walk right up that. I don't even have to hold sprint. I can just kind of walk right up that and it's totally fine. Uh, but it doesn't look very nice. They're all going to be different because they're all free placed. And I'm going to show you how to make a perfect like literally perfect spiral staircase here that is all perfectly snapped into place. And yes, you will have to kind of jump up it a little bit because it's not just going to be like walkable, but that's no big deal, especially over looks. So you can see that because the core wood actually snaps to each other, we can just keep continuing to snap it underneath the next and continue to just keep uh, working our way down with the core wood here. And it's a perfectly snapped spiral staircase. And don't worry, this is not the finished product. I have a lot more that I'm going to be doing on this core wood to actually make this look kind of like steps. So with that said, that is our spiral staircase. And it actually kind of goes like this. So you can see that you can kind of jump up it. And then we come out to the level here uh, where it's going to be. So with that said, what we're going to do now that we know where this bottom piece is supposed to go, I'm actually going to destroy the rest of these. Because now I'm going to show you an extra little tip to make your spiral staircase just look so much better. So what we're going to do is actually take these uh, these little one meter by one meter planks and snap them on top of each core wood. So then we stack the core wood, rotate it one, take the one meter planks, snap them on top like that, and then grab our core wood again, stack it, rotate it one. So look at that. It actually looks like stairs and we're going to fix up this edge right here pretty soon and put some nice trim on that. But for the time being, guys, this is an amazing staircase, um, amazing staircase. And yeah, you do have to jump up it, like I said, but like who cares about jumping up it when it looks this good? I mean, it's yeah, it's so easy to jump up even again. I don't even have any food in my inventory. You don't need much stamina. You can get up this being the very beginning game character. So again, I'm just snapping each piece of core wood onto each other and I'll get back to you when I get up to the second level here. All right, so we are now at the second level right here. And as you can see, there's a little tiny gap in the floor, but we'll be fixing that really shortly. But look at how amazing this looks. And again, you do have to kind of jump up it, but it looks so, so nice and clean. So to do the trim around this, I'm going to show you that right now we're gonna take actually a uh, one meter cross beam and we're going to snap this onto the edge of each of the core wood pieces all right so as you can see here we're just kind of taking it and snapping it to the top right in right like that so that that's actually that actually helps i can kind of aim for the beam above it as you can see this creates this beautiful trim that circles right up with the staircase and just ends up looking really, really clean. So we're gonna do that all the way up to this top section here. But then this very top section, what we're actually gonna do is I'm going to bring it out. We're gonna use actually a two meter beam right here rather than two one meters. So we're gonna use that. And then we are going to hold shift and free place one more of those right next to it, just like so. So now you can see that the floor has no issues coming right into this spiral staircase and we just head down and we're obviously going to continue making it go right up to the watchtower. But this is how we're going to get down into the basement. Really good use of space and we can go ahead and put some chests and everything in here when I decorate it later and you guys will see that near the end of the video.
All right, so the next thing we're gonna work on here is the fireplace downstairs so that we can kind of get a chimney placement. So what I was thinking for the fireplace, first we're actually just gonna place the fireplace so that we can kind of determine where smoke needs to go. So I'm gonna do it right in the center there. And then I'm actually going to kind of do this little bit of a trim around it, kind of like that. And then I am going to bring it out, I think, let's, let's try it with the half meter here first of kind of bringing it out like that. That actually does not look bad at all. That definitely does not look bad. So we're gonna do that and then I'm actually, I'm gonna leave it open there. So I'm gonna just do this trim bit right here and a little trim bit right there. And that's gonna be our fireplace essentially. And it does look, it does look pretty nice. What I might actually do to even clean this up a bit more is put like this, uh, yeah, there we go. That's kind of look I was going for. Kind of this open fireplace design. And then we're actually going to go ahead and place the cauldron. Well, maybe we'll deal with the cauldron after we put the cooking stand. This can be a bit finicky to kind of place a cauldron and a cooking stand on the same fire. So I may actually just end up putting the cooking stand all the way over here so that we can go ahead and access that, which we can put a piece of meat on there. That's good. And then I might just put the cauldron right over here because we can actually place the cauldron after we place the cooking stand and it ends up looking pretty nice i think we'll kind of go yeah something like that so there we go that works we now can be able to cook stuff and we can also use the cauldron without any hassle at all but now I'm actually going to do the chests that I was going to put right up here so again trying to use the most effective use of space here I'm going to go ahead and bring across beams all the way through here, just like that, to make that look really nice. And we're going to go ahead and put in core wood. Well, actually, not core wood. We're going to make this the regular one and a half of those little poles there. So nine meters, essentially. Or no, two meters, three meters, nine feet. And... That's gonna be the opening. I'm not gonna put a door here because I do like this open feel, but that ends up kind of trimming that up really nice. And then we can go ahead and do the chests here. And for the chests, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just go ahead and break these floor pieces just so I can see a little bit better to place them. And first I'm actually gonna take the little one meters here and I'm going to come out just like so with them just so I have a floor to actually place the chest on and make everything look nice. So now we have those three and I can go ahead and put this upper floor back just like so. Perfect. And I, I'll deal with that other side of the floor later but as you can see there perfect uh, hidden storage not really hidden but Good use of space right up there and we can actually kind of just put those beams there to kind of block it off for the time being so there are hidden chests underneath the basement here and right in here like i was saying i was also going to put some hidden chests for even more storage so uh, to plan this out i'm trying to debate what the best option would be in terms of making kind of a hidden chest system i think what i'm gonna do is I think I'm going to wall this off right here. Kind of using those two like that. And then I'm actually going to use the one meter wall to kind of, uh, I don't know, just, just clean this, uh, this edge up right here a little bit. Assuming that it doesn't snap into the stair. Does that actually end up? Yeah, perfect. That does not snap into the stair. I mean, a tiny, tiny bit right on the corner, but you're not even going to notice that. So that ends up uh, making that wall just look a little bit nicer for the stairway. And then we can go ahead and put our uh, chest down without too much problem. And I think because the chests actually need these little pieces to stack, I will just go ahead and kind of put one back there. And I'm hoping that I can kind of take a chest just like so. Put it right there and stack it on top of itself one more time before it actually clips into the floor. So I will go ahead and do that. And then debating if I kind of leave it open or if I, oh, I actually think I will put like 
just a little kind of cross section here. And then with this section, we can kind of, uh, kind of get in there close and free place it so that it kind of phases through just like so, making it perfectly centered. There we go. And that ends up being some more nice hidden storage right underneath the staircase. And again, none of those clip through the steps, so that ends up cleaning this area up really, really nicely. So that's already like the most practical mini basement design so far. I think this basement here is going to be kind of the crafting slash kitchen area. So I'm going to go ahead and do for the kitchen is I'm going to make it kind of like a kind of a bar type design. All right, so this ended up being the new kitchen design. That way you can just go all the way back here. We have the cauldron, the cooking stand back here. And what I like about this style table is I can actually put a chest right underneath it, just like so, so that you could actually store your uh, meads and potions right from the cauldron and then have sort of this little, uh, this little walkway coming out. And then obviously we'll deal with lighting and a lot of other things in a bit but I am going to go ahead and put a corner piece of trim right on here. So we'll just go ahead and do that and put one right below it. That just cleans up that edge, makes everything look really nice there. So I think that that definitely does it for the kitchen well there. And now I have to figure out kind of a forge slash workbench design in here because we are going to be crafting things and we need a spot to do that. So the workbench actually sits really nicely here kind of phased right into the side, kind of like that. And we're just gonna go ahead and get the level one pieces placed for the time being. And then we'll worry about getting them up to level two pretty quickly because you don't need, this obviously won't be max level forge and workbench. I'm sure there's a way where you actually could make them a max level. But for now, we're just gonna try and make them as high level as we can. And yeah, we might even be able to, no, we can't entirely phase that through. We could kind of put it right there. So this is, this is definitely working. This is definitely working. We're actually getting the workbench up fairly high. The chopping block is another, uh, another very simple thing that can just kind of go right here. And you can see here, we are actually getting a crafting station going here. And now for the tanning rack as well, that's a really easy thing to do because all we have to do to place the tanning rack is put three of these little guys, creates a little shelf, and we can go ahead and pop the tanning rack right above there and phase it kind of as far to the wall as possible so it looks like we kind of have some of that shelf space. And that actually does not clip through the roof and it upgrades the crafting station. So you can see now that it is level three crafting station and a level three forge once we actually get a roof on this. So this is not bad at all. And by the time this build is finished, once I do all the decorating, I'm hoping to actually get these even higher levels. So again, I'll show you that when uh, when it's time later on, but I'm just showing you a bit of the decoration as I go and then I'll do some decoration. And I'll just cut to when I actually finish the decoration. So I think we'll go ahead and put a little deer rug there. That ends up making it look really nice. So again, this is kind of the eating slash crafting miniature basement, but really, really good use of space. So with that said, before I get too into myself in terms of decorating, those are kind of the main layouts of things for down there. And now we can go ahead and start working on this upstairs here. So we can go ahead and bring the floor all the way around and officially finish that off. All right, so there is some of the floor and I am gonna go ahead and just make the entryway right here. I think I'll just use, yeah, I'll just use two stairs for the time being. And again, you could do whatever sort of a pathway or whatever suits you in terms of actually entering the area. But I'm gonna go ahead and snap kind of these little trim pieces right on the sides here. And maybe for these bottom ones, I'll just come out one, just kind of like that. Well, maybe not. It, it depends. If the ground was a little bit flatter, which maybe I could just make it a little bit flatter for right now. Um, yeah, that that uh, that'll that'll kind of do. And again, that could be whatever pathway 
you want it to be and then that uh yeah that looks a little bit better so it just kind of gives it a nice inviting feel coming right up the stairs and then i can go ahead and destroy those two so that we got a nice smooth transition here so let me go ahead and finish off the floor and get back to you when that's finished so at the chimney here i'm placing a floor that overlaps it halfway kind of like so because this little section right back here should be enough for that smoke to actually ventilate because it does look like it is coming up so i'm hoping yep it's rising through there so i just have to hope that the fire doesn't go out being uh being too much smoke down there which i don't think it is and even if i stand over here i am not getting the too smoked uh warning so it's definitely a slightly uh smaller chimney there you could go the full uh Th uh, the full three meters wide but i think that's a pretty wide chimney and again we have to kind of use our space as effectively and efficiently as possible so that's what we're going to do for now and we can go ahead and kind of trim out the rest of this to uh end up looking really nice before we go ahead and build the second level here and then for this very back section, the reason I left that open is because I actually wanted to show you guys how to do this. So you can see here that it's not, if I place uh, one of these, it's not exactly, there's like a tiny little gap here. So I just uh, point my other uh, one right on there and they kind of face through each other just like that. And I can do the same thing with the trim beams, point one on that side and one on that side. And it ends up tying in really nice there. So now we can go ahead and kind of start working on the second level. So I'm going to start with the chimney just because that is kind of like a central point here that is, uh, is going to be fairly important. So because it's a chimney, I'm actually going to place these, uh, these walls kind of with the inside facing out. I mean, I guess there is no inside or outside, but, um, but the more rough inside, and then I'm going to kind of phase these cross pieces right into it just like so and that is essentially what i'm going to do to build it all the way up and then you can see on the bottom there i'm just going to take a littler cross piece and i'm hoping yep i can snap it right like so and then uh, i'm going to take just a little pull and pop it right there so i know you can't see that super well because of the lighting and such but this is going to end up being a really nice wooden chimney and it's going to go much higher and obviously vent out properly when we do get there. So now for the actual framing of the house, what I'm going to do is, as you can see, I kind of have this solid floor and then the stilts kind of come out where a deck is going to come out. So I am gonna have a full wraparound deck on this house, I believe, although I'm not sure if I want to do the full wraparound deck just yet, but I, I, think, I think I do. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do here is snap one piece there and one piece there and this is going to end up being kind of the front of the house here and then uh, i'm going to kind of snap these back about where it kind of ties into the back right here so these cord posts are going to be kind of the center of our house and then the very edge of the house is actually going to come out all the way to the edge here and it's not um Let's see here, because I'm going to have it be like an L shape, essentially. And I think I'm going to start that L shape right over here. Yes, I do like that. And then we can kind of have like a wraparound deck that kind of goes all the way to all the way to the chimney here on the side, like so. And then for the entryway, I am going to go ahead and pop down two of these doors. And that is going to be the entryway right there. And then we could go ahead and start to bring this watchtower up just a little bit more. So because I am using these core wood, I'm going to go ahead and snap a core wood piece to each one of these. And this is going to be the doorway for that watchtower. Um... And again, that's not like a super effective thing. It's just uh, aesthetically, I figured, you know what? I could teach you guys how to build a spiral staircase and a round roof while I'm at it and kind of phase them to create a really amazing house design here. So this back side is going to be filled in and we're just going to use these, uh, these little one meter guys and that ends up looking really awesome. So now we essentially walk right into the watchtower like that and it's going to look really, really cool when we're done. So I am going to actually continue this deck out, and I think 
yeah, it is kind of going to phase in kind of like this. So I'm going to try this and see how it looks. But I may end up actually changing this uh, changing this design around very slightly uh, in the long run. Alright, so yeah, I'm actually okay with that kind of uh, phasing like that kind of around the floor. And I can just take these little, uh, these little tiny guys and kind of put them in just like so to kind of even out the uh the vibe of this of this space in here just like that so we are gonna have kind of a little uh i don't know a little bit of a lip on the on the staircase here but nothing that's going to affect our entering and exiting of the space so and now i can go ahead and complete the floor on this back side here and that should be able to snap in one like that and one like that and then put some nice uh kind of snapping points this one actually didn't snap in quite right but just to kind of finish this top section so we can officially build the watchtower up from here i'm essentially just framing this out and this is gonna be a full wrap around deck from all like all the way around the watchtower which is gonna be pretty awesome so i am gonna go ahead and put a back door right here and I think that's probably a good way to do it, because then if I open it, yeah, it'll kind of phase into the watchtower, but that doesn't look too bad. Um, it doesn't look too bad at all. So that'll be a nice little, uh, like, back door, essentially. Alright, so you can see here now that we brought it up the full 45 in the center, and I'm just going to worry about these little uh, trim pieces after I get the whole uh, kind of framing of the roof on. So what I also like to do on my roofs is in between every panel, I just like to put these little uh, angled beams here. It just adds an actual beam to the roof, and it ends up looking really nice. So this is all going to this is all gonna phase in and end up looking nice. And now the reason I'm doing this is because I'm actually going to destroy these middle sections here. And we're going to go ahead and continue to bring this 45 degree out all the way here. And we're going to have like a loft with a little window looking out right over here. And you'll see again what I'm talking about when this is all finished. But we're going to bring those out just like so. And I'm going to go ahead and kind of start trimming out this little window here. So we're going to go ahead and put those there. And we're going to take the inverted wall and put it on both sides just like so. And that should snap in just like so. And then we can kind of uh, bring this beam out right here. And put the little cross right over this side as well. So that's how it's kind of going to look over here. And then I can also bring this... Um, yeah, trim-wise, I'll show you what I'll do to kind of make this all look really nice. But for the meantime, I'm just going to get all these center beams in place. And then on this side, again, we can use the 45-degree uh, center thing just right here. Patch that up. That looks nice. Just going to go ahead and add a little roof ridge. Just like so. And I may bring the chimney up one more block, but I kind of like it being low profile. Honestly, definitely does not look too bad. So this is definitely taking some shape as a nice little Meadows home here. 
So let me continue kind of framing out this uh, this window here and then bringing the roof and then I will go ahead and add that uh, that roof trim on all the sides. All right, so for this window, I'm just going to leave it big and grand, kind of like that. And then for the trim on the sides of the roof, rather than actually coming out with another roof beam, I'm going to go ahead and put a beam right here and right here. And then I'm going to take these little one meters and pop one of those like that. Pop one right there. And then I'm going to take these kind of little flat pieces, face them outside, kind of like this. Gives it a little uh, flange on the side of the roof there, right on both sides of the window. And it ends up kind of just framing that out and making it look really nice. Another thing I'm going to do as well is just go ahead and add a little windowsill right here. Always love the little windowsills. That's not centered. It's going to bother me if it's not. Something like that. There we go. That's a little bit better. Uh, so that was just free placed. Again, just holding down shift while you place it. But uh, just adds a little bit of a nice, a little bit of a nice touch to this top section here. Actually, I'm gonna add a little. Uh, I think I can add a little half wall beam right in there. Perfect. So that's how I'm gonna do the roof there. And then on the front here, I am gonna come out an additional uh, roof piece so that I can continue with this covered deck design here on the front. And then go up with the 45s. Put the cross up front, make sure I'm being consistent with the side beams here. And now I can go ahead and kind of trim out the entire roof here the way that I was doing it originally and the way that I had stopped doing it. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of go like that and add the additional framing to the outside of the roof, just like so. and a second little cross right in front like that so that looks pretty nice and i'm going to go ahead and do that to all of these little roof peaks both this one and on the other sides as well so on this side that's closest to the watchtower i'm actually just going to do one little frame piece right here because the rest is kind of going to be hidden by the watchtower there so i think i can kind of snap that on just like that and then that's all I'll do there. And then I'll just do it for this little window right here. All right, so that does look nice. And now I'm, of course, going to kind of continue this, uh, this nice little thing we got going right here. And I'm actually going to snap a few beams right in between there just to add a little bit more texture there on the sides. And I'm going to kind of... Actually, I'm going to kind of... Depending if I should leave that open like this or if I should fill it in. I think I'm going to leave it open for now. But with that said, I'm also going to actually put this uh, this design on all of the sides as well of the roof. And not just the front of them. Because I do really like the way that that turned out. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And then again, just placing these little pieces kind of in between. And I think these pieces will take water damage. Maybe they won't since they're kind of slightly under the tip of the roof there. But I have a feeling they probably will take water damage, but that's okay. I'm okay with them being slightly grayed out. So again, that just looks really, really cool. And I'm just going to go ahead and add a secondary beam in between each one just to give it kind of this flange texture on all sides of the roof. All right, so another thing I wanted to change is actually having the stairs centered in front of the door. So I had them all the way at the edge before, but I'm just going to go ahead and make that quick adjustment. So that looks a little bit better, nice and centered on the doors. All right, so now I'm going to work on adding the remainder of the deck railing now that I've kind of finalized the positioning of the front stairs and the deck. All right, so now that we've kind of established the railing, I am going to go ahead and kind of establish whereabouts I want to kind of frame out some really nice windows.
Perfect, so that makes some nicely framed windows. I'm gonna go ahead and put some trim on the top and bottoms of them. Just like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and put the shutters on the outsides of them. So we're gonna go ahead and put one, two, just like that. Spin them around one, two, like that. And we can go ahead and open them. And you'll see that from the outside, that just adds a really awesome texture onto that front window like that to have some uh, some little shutters there. So that does look very, very nice. And with that said, I'm actually going to do a windowsill on all of these as well. Just because we do have the room and it's going to look really clean if I do. So I kind of just free place that just like so and it kind of phases in halfway like that. And I'm going to go ahead and do that on all of my windows here. So just kind of eyeballing halfway into that core wood beam right there. Perfect. So now with this center piece, I am going to go ahead and bring this up all the way with the core wood um, in the center there. Just so that it looks really consistent and it doesn't look like it's dying off. So that looks really nice. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to this little... Uh, this little post right there with the core wood. And this is going to be probably a solid wall, maybe with a little tiny window. But this is going to essentially be the height of our uh, balcony is going to be right up there. So oh, I did actually also forget to put a little, little tiny half wall right above there. And a little trim piece, just like so. To kind of finish that area off. And I'm going to do the same thing here putting two little trim pieces, and I'm actually going to keep this. Well, I might fill that in later. We'll have to see. Stairs to the loft are going to kind of go right here, and I know that kind of does face through the edge of the window on the side there, kind of like that, but I'm not too picky about that, and it doesn't look too bad. And so I am going to kind of leave it, kind of this open design here. We're going to go right up here. And we have this beautiful loft here, which I have to finish off that floor. And I am going to go ahead and cover it up over there. But that I just kind of left that open so we could put some chests underneath these roof, roof peaks where they were a little bit shallower here. All right, so now for the bed, I'm just going to place it right here with a little tiny nightstand next to it, as well as a little chest for some personal goods. And I'm not going to get too fancy with the furniture because, again, this is all just stuff that you can find right here in the meadows as well as the Black Forest. Alright, so here's the bedroom a little bit more finished out. I decided to add a little desk, kind of a, like doubling on this windowsill a little bit lower here. have a little treasure corner and a little personal chest, obviously, but I decided to kind of frame that out a little bit differently. We still do have the nightstand back there. And then another chest here. Two more chests up here, so these things could be for like weapons, armor, all that good stuff. And then I put a stool with a little shield on top of it to kind of add that texture for like a miniature coffee table or something if you wanted to set your drink somewhere. And some nice little deer skins, so that definitely adds a beautiful vibe to this little loft bedroom here. I love the sconces. And aside from some of the workbench upgrades, I'm trying to keep all the furniture as well as the items and everything in this build, all authentic to Black Forest and Meadows. So with that said, that is the little loft bedroom. Again, it looks like it is super small, but when you actually climb up into it, it uh, it's not that small at all. It actually is quite spacious because you have everything you need. The bed is close enough to the fire um, to be able to actually sleep there, so that's awesome. And then we do have this section right over here uh, that is closed off. So I am going to go ahead and debating if I want to add like a little core wood beam there. I think I do. I think that kind of does look nice. And then I think I'm going to add like a little uh, add a little window right over here on this side here. So let's see here. Something like that. And then... Uh, let's see here, something like that, and then two of the little guys on the sides, just like that to kind of mirror the window that we had going. There we go. That looks really nice, and that will allow for a bit of a bit of being able to see through that top. And then I am going to go ahead and do some storage here behind the stairs. 
It just makes a lot of sense to do that. And the way I like to do storage here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to go into the furniture. We're going to grab one chest and two chests, just like so. We can go back into the building and do that. And another floor right on top there, like so. And we're going to stack it too high with the chests. So I'm going to put another one and another one just like that. We are going to go ahead and actually kind of put some trim on the sides of these ladders here. Um, it just looks really nice on the outside there. We're going to leave this side blank, obviously. But um, again, just adds like a nice clean effect to the ladder there. And then I believe we may even be able to fit a little chest right under here. We can, in fact, do that. That is awesome. Uh, but before I do, I'm going to just kind of put that little piece there. And then I can kind of snap a little chest in place there. Oh, this is, this is going to be perfect. I'm going to give plenty of storage. And that now allows for a whole bunch of storage. So that when you first enter in through the doors, you got plenty of storage right here to dump all your stuff. And again, it's not a whole lot of storage. It's definitely not the best, most effective storage design. Um, well, it's the most effective, but um, but it's not a whole lot of storage. But between everything that's here, everything that's in the basement, and everything that's upstairs, you definitely will have enough storage. And I may even put a little stack of chests right here as well for some more storage. We'll kind of see how some of the stuff starts to uh, starts to end up here. So I think in this little corner here, I'm actually going to have a little table that comes out. And again, I'm just using a simple table because we do have some fine wood in the meadows and in the black forest. So I'm just going to do something like that and put in a couple of chairs on both sides. We'll just kind of put one and to just like that on both sides and then like you know if you want to have your friends over or anything like that for some dinner then uh we've got a little place to sit up here and read and do things and all that good stuff so there we go so now we've got the Eichther trophy kind of sitting like right above this little mantle here and just adds such a cool little feel there. So let me start finishing up some stuff and we'll do the full tour at the end of the video. All right, so it did come to my conclusion that a little bit more storage could be really nice. So I am going ahead and adding a nice little uh, chest wall right here. It just made the most sense Perfect spot for some more food that you could reach right from the table. Still allows for these beautiful windows and honestly doesn't even eat up too much space. And because we do have a high ceiling right here, I could go ahead and go all the way up to the top with that one chest there. And then this spot could be a perfect place for a hidden sconce up here. Let's see if I could get one of those to actually fit first of all. But I think I can if I do it like right above that right above that beam. Yeah, it does stay lit. That looks awesome. That looks awesome. So we've got some nice little hidden light. So this is the new way that I decided to frame out this staircase also, by the way. And actually, I do think I just need to get rid of that. And that way I can walk down. So for the roof, this is a really awesome round roof design um, that I've kind of figured out how to do. So what we're going to do is take these 26 degree kind of roof corners here and we are going to place them all on these core beams here these little core wood beams and you can see here that the place to stand in the watchtower is definitely going to be pretty small um but it's still plenty of height to be able to actually like look down there and what we can do um to kind of add almost a little bit of safety here is um we can actually add these little core wood posts just being like, you know, two of them high, something like that. And it just looks, uh, just looks pretty nice. And then we are going to continue this core, this core wood post up one more because we're going to need this 
to actually be able to support these roofs because you can see that some of them are very dark red and this is at least orange so that means that I can put another piece kind of leaning off of it. So now what we're going to do is take the uh, 26 30 corners again and again we're going to snap them right off of the tips of these and that core would beam in the middle is going to allow this to actually be possible without all of them falling down. All right, so now you've got a roof that looks something like this. And you can see here that we do have a lot of little holes up here. So we're going to go ahead and patch those. And all we need to do to patch those is take the 26 degree roof. And we're going to go ahead and put one there. So one there, one there. And now we can do one more uh, on this side like that. And one more right there and then same thing over here so one there and one right up there if i can get it snapped in the right direction uh i think i gotta get up here there we go and then just one more of that replicated right over here you can see that i made the square of the roof to kind of be this uh you know this is what the roof looks like from underneath very, very clean. Uh, definitely not, definitely not bad at all. And let me go show you how that design looks from up top. Check that out. So it's like a beautiful little low profile rounded roof that just, oh, it just works out perfectly. It just works out so perfectly. I mean, what can I say? So now, um, you know, you can see here that this little like core, it's almost like a little flower on the top. So it's, it's such a cool, such a cool way of doing a rounded roof that I just thought would work out so well for this. Doesn't need much structural support and it allows for this thing to be built up this high without having to use the iron reinforced beams. So now I think what I'm going to do is play around with some trim on the edges here. So I could kind of go in and out and I am going to still have these little like spikes kind of sticking out because that does just add a little bit of character a little bit of depth as much as i can right there this is the main structure of our beautiful little meadows house here with an integrated watchtower and because these roofs are kind of coming out over here that will actually to some extent protect this uh this deck that's down here so with that said now it's just a matter of decorating everything so I will get back to you guys after everything is decorated and do like a final tour. All right, so I am finally finished or at least somewhat finished enough to do a nice little tour here. So looking at the house from the outside, I will just do like a little fly around. That's essentially uh, pretty finished, pretty similar to last time. But the inside is now much more fully decked out and looking really awesome. So I did go ahead and name it Chisels Grove. And again, most everything in here, obviously these little hanging braziers and the armor stand, as well as some of the forge improvements do require a little bit of iron or some chains, but assuming you like made one little trip out to the swamp or something, um, and you don't even have to do that, this cabin is totally possible. So we come right into here and we are granted by or greeted by this beautiful staircase right here. And I did go ahead and put a little banner, a little deer trophy right up there. Got your nice bronze armor or troll hide armor or something right on the armor stand that's kind of backed by this beautiful banner that kind of brings out the gold in the armor. We have plenty of storage here, so you'll never run out of storage. And then a beautiful little table, put some food on the table here and the nice trophy there and another little mantle to set some things on if I wanted to. Got a little uh, shield, a little at gear, and then all the storage underneath the stairs. So it's also worth mentioning that this is a great spot to put a fermenter as well. And now we head downstairs and we have this beautiful I mean, I, I definitely use the space very effectively down here. So we obviously have the storage underneath the stairs, as if that's not already good enough. I have another full stack of shelves right here with storage, and three more chests that are kind of hidden right up there 
of storage. So this is super awesome. We do have a maximum level cauldron with the spice rack here and the butcher's table, which we were able to fit right there. So we do have the full on cauldron here. And this is like super, super awesome. The level three and then a nice little cooking stand there. Got a little, uh, kind of little beam as a mantelpiece there with another shelf for some food. And then obviously we do have this chest right here with food underneath the counter. And then I put a little bit of food on the table, just kind of a little island bar where you can eat down here. And then obviously the main table is upstairs. But I was impressed with how high level I was able to get the crafting area in here. So we do actually have a level four workbench. Uh, none of these are max level, but they're definitely pretty close. And we do have a level five forge. So this is really awesome. And then the only things to make them higher level, we'd need the uh, the full on like, I think it's the odds I'd like to say for the uh, workbench. And then we need the forge cooler, or we do have the forge cooler, but the bellows and stuff, which are quite large. So I could actually have extended this basement a little bit farther to fit the bellows kind of behind the forge or something. So I'll leave it up to you. Um, in terms of how you want to kind of expand the basement or kind of maybe even have some of the things outside but still close enough to give it the next level kind of a thing. So we've got some nice little deer rugs and you can see there, nice comfort 10, which gives us a nice solid rested bonus. So we come right up here and again, you kind of just got to hop these, but they look super, super clean. I mean, look at that spiral staircase, absolutely gorgeous. So anyway, we come all the way up here and we have our nice little lookout crow's watch area with a nice little chair and a stool that again we could just sit and peacefully read or uh, shoot out of there with the bow and i may actually get an item stand later on and kind of mount the bow right onto this post right here so that's another thing that you could do if you'd like to um, as a place for that i might even put a chest up there that kind of thing but again this is just really really simple almost everything you can just find in the black forest and the meadows. And we do head out this door right here and have a full wrap around deck underneath this watchtower here that goes all the way around, all the way to the front of the house. So that is such a cool design. And then even all the way off to the side here. So quite a bit of nice outdoor space. I might even like put a little chair right here uh, to have like a little reading nook or something later down the road. But with that said, let's go upstairs. We do have the bedroom, uh, which is now fully uh, fully finished to the point where I want it to be. We've got the nice little treasure area like I showed. Nice little desk that uh, overlooks the forest there. Little, uh, little coffee table or something there. And then a bunch of little personal chests all scattered throughout and the bed. So again, up here, we do get that full comfort 10. So absolutely everywhere in the house, pretty much, you get that nice comfort 10 because of the banners and everything else. And I'm sure there are other plenty of other ways I could do to kind of upgrade comfort as well. But that was, uh, that was a lot of what I could do with just really simple materials. So nothing fancy, but such a beautiful design. Such a beautiful design. So this is definitely an awesome practical build for a starter base in the Meadows biome near the water, especially if you had that look lookout tower up there being near the water to kind of watch for ships or things. But um, anyway, I hope you all enjoyed. Um, if you'd like to see more builds like this, little simple mini builds and things, um, I do often have a lot of ideas, so I'll just kind of hop on uh, with some dev commands and, and uh, <laughs> let my ideas flow. So hopefully this did inspire you. And um, I'll definitely be looking forward to building something similar to this in my survival world without dev commands. So hopefully this inspired you. Please uh, subscribe or leave a like if you did enjoy. And I will see you in the next one. Cheers.